Hey campers, let's uh, talk about fresh water systems today. I'm uh, currently in a motorhome and we have pretty easy access to see about everything you need to know. So I want to take this opportunity to share it with people so you understand how your fresh water system works, what the components are, what to expect if you have a failure, or maybe you're just doing something wrong, which beginners often do. Let's start with the tank. All RVs are equipped with a freshwater tank. Their storage capacity will vary depending upon the size of the RV. This is a Class A motorhome and it has a rather large tank, around 80 gallons approximately. Travel trailers and fifth wheels can typically range between 30 gallons and 80 gallons depending on the size and brand. Now what you're seeing here are the sensors. There's going to be another video about sensors, but just a quick brief rundown. This sensor, which is the bottom empty sensor, is grounded to the chassis. As the water fills and travels up the tank, it makes contact with the additional sensors and gives you the next reading, whether it be quarter, one-third, two-third, and eventually full when the water reaches the top of the tank. This ground signal grounds out the LED lights on the monitor panel and tells you that your tank is full. Freshwater tanks are generally plumbed with one input and several outputs. And the reason being, let me just point them out, this is our inlet, this is where the water comes into the tank at the top. This is our drain, and way back here in the dark is our supply hose, also located on the bottom of the tank, right here, which runs over to our water pump as you can see here. We're gonna talk more about that valve and the water pump in a minute. In addition to these inlets and outlets, we also have, what you're seeing here is this clear tube which is attached to an elbow on the top of the tank. I cannot show that to you. Well, I guess there it is, we can see it. And what that's there for is if you forget you're filling the tank or you just get too much water in it, maybe your sensors aren't functioning properly and you don't know it's full, the overflow will come out of this clear tube and eventually run out the bottom or the side of the motorhome. And it will appear as if you have a water leak, and a lot of folks think they do. Uh, but it's just your overflow running out underneath so that you don't break the tank and have a big water mess inside the RV. Freshwater systems are often misconstrued because we actually have water in a storage tank where fresh water logically makes common sense that it's coming in fresh into the RV, but those are actually called city water connections where we're running off of city water pressure from a hose and introducing fresh water into the RV. The fresh water system was designed to allow you to store water and carry it with you, whether it be for primitive camping or maybe you need to stop on the side of the road on a long trip and use the facilities or wash your hands, get water for any reason that you would need water. The fresh water system will supply that to all your fixtures inside. So this water is delivered through a fresh water pump. These are 12 volt DC. You do not have to be plugged in for these to operate. It is a DC circuit. And these are diaphragm pumps. These are not impeller pumps. I hear people say that a lot, that the impeller's bad or I've got cavitation in the impeller. Uh, that's not the case. There are diaphragms located in the head of this pump and it actually pumps the water with a diaphragm action as opposed to a spinning impeller. Uh, the next thing that I would like to talk about is this strainer. This is here to protect contaminants from going into your fresh water system and eventually to your fixtures. It's equipped with a stainless steel mesh screen that will filter out any large particles that try to pass into the fresh water system and make their way into your coach. I get a lot of people that experience leaks at this location. Of course, they don't know where it is because they haven't looked for it, and I typically find that this is how vibrated loose. Uh, these, these fit pretty tight, and they have an O-ring, which is supposed to keep them in place, but I cannot tell you how many of them I have found that are actually loose, and the water is just seeping out around the top. And, of course, I've found several of them that are broken because they've frozen the way they sit. Uh, they're full of water, and they don't get evacuated properly during the winterization process. And of course they freeze, expand, and they bust open. But this is a fairly inexpensive part. It can cause big messes, but if you identify it early and get it swapped out, 
no harm, no foul. Moving back at the beginning of our delivery system, you'll notice that there's a valve here. And what this valve does is switches us from two different hoses. The first hose was the supply hose that we saw coming from the supply fitting in the bottom of the tank. And the second one, if we follow it over here, I pulled it out. This is for winterization purposes. It's just an empty hose with a cap in it. And what this is for is to stick into a jug of antifreeze when you're doing your winterization. And then you can utilize the DC water pump and pump that antifreeze into your water lines and faucets to prevent them from freezing in winter conditions. So another thing that you may experience if you're a new RV owner especially and you don't know this is that this valve is in this position which is in line with the winterization hose and it's just sucking air. It's not actually doing anything and it's capped off. So the internal pressure switch inside the pump turns itself off because it can't nothing's flowing and it can't uh, provide pressure. So what, all you have to do is switch your valve to the supply and now it has the ability to suck the water out of the tank through the other hose and deliver it into the system. Something simple just to check. Uh, another thing to note with DC 12 volt water pumps in RVs is they do have inline fuse. This fuse should always be 10 amps and if it blows it should never be replaced with a larger amperage fuse. You'll notice on the cap it does say 10 amp maximum. Uh, if you put a larger fuse in here, just like anything else DC, you could potentially, you know, melt the wire, start a fire, get burned, short something out, destroy the pump, etc. Uh, we don't want anything like that to happen, obviously. So just stick with the 10 amp max and follow what it says. So basically, that is a full freshwater system rundown. These are, uh, like I said, they're more geared towards primitive camping or roadside stops where water is needed. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments. I'd be happy to answer them. I do promise to respond quickly. And if you like my tutorial videos and instructional videos, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks, guys. I'll see you in the next video.